Hey, for our first investigation of how these React hooks are really working, let's take a deeper look into the useState hook. For the very first bit of functionality in the application, we set up a search bar that the user could type into and conduct a Google search with. This worked fine, but there was something slightly quirky about its behavior. So head back to the app.js file. In the update user query function, notice that we have a console.log of the user query variable before we set the user query within this state. So let's check out that log once more. If you don't have the application running already, head to your command line and then fire npm run start. And this should go ahead and open up the application at localhost 3000 in the browser. So allow it to refresh. And then we're gonna check out that user query log by typing into the input. So go ahead and type into the input. And indeed you should see some logs in the developer console. But every time, the log seems one behind the actual fully entered output, rather the actual fully entered entry in the input field. So what's going on? Could it be perhaps that it's a matter of our console.log appearing before the set user query call and not after? So let's go ahead and change that in the code. We're gonna make the console.log after set user query instead. So with that change, go ahead and save. The application should restart in the background. And once more, go ahead and type into the input. And again, the entry is hello there, but the user query log has still only made it to hello there without that final E. So you should find that even this change doesn't address the fact that the user query value seems one behind whatever was typed into the input. It's definitely quirky. To make the situation even more mysterious, we can add a div that displays a user query as text using a pair of curly braces after the button. Again, using a pair of curly braces, let's actually display the user query value for now. So go ahead and save that back in the application. There it is, I'm typing in hello there. You should see that the actual value is hello there fully for the entire entry. But again, the user query log hasn't made it to the final value. All right, let's investigate what is going on on a deeper level with this update user query method. This update user query function is provided to React through an on-chain handler as a callback function by referencing the name of the function itself. So the gist, of the overall mismatch between the log and the value is as a function, this callback has its own closure. As a function with its own closure, this update user query method has its own scope with access to certain global and local variables. And these variables are defined at the time the callback is created. Now to explain why this would cause a mismatch between the log and the user query value, let's actually follow the order of execution as the input is being typed into. So the engine handles the execution like this when it's firing the update user query function. Initially, the input value is blank. In addition, internally, the user query state value is a blank string, but then it's typed into the user types an H. In response to this event, the on change handler knows to send a callback function to the React engine. This callback function itself has both the set user query line and the console.log line of the user query. So first we arrive at the set user query line. The key thing about this is that the set user query line doesn't execute right away. It's asynchronous and non-blocking. It's handled in the background within the React engine, ready to actually update the internal user query value and eventually recall a render. But at the same time, it doesn't block the rest of the update user query method from executing. JavaScript still makes it to the console.log line. The log fires off and the user query at this time is a blank string. So the console prints that the user query value is blank. All right, next the React engine in due time will call the queued set user query function. Internally, the set user query function updates a user query value that React is internally keeping track of within its engine as relevant state for the component. Now the user query value becomes H, which is what the user typed. Internally, React knows that since a state variable has changed, it should re-trigger a render of the component. So it recalls the app component that contains this input. This time, the useState hook on the first line of the app component destructures the updated internal user query value from the React engine. 
which means that in the JSX, it can display the new H value to the user for the user query. So overall, this creates a series of events where anytime the user types, the console.log will print the current user value. But later on, during a re-render, this gives the JSX a chance to reflect the updated user query value within the internal React engine. So to extend the example, let's say that the user now decides to type another character. Say they follow up the H with an I into the input. Again, the on change triggers the update user query callback. The first line that is fired is the set user query line, which is queued to fire in the React engine to eventually make a state update. It doesn't block JavaScript from executing the rest of the function though. So next the console.log is reached. And this time, the user query value in terms of the scope of this callback function is H. So an H is logged to the console. Now that this callback function is done executing, the set user query function held internally by React fires and updates the user query value held by React to the event.target value, which is now high. Since a setter was used for state, React knows to re-render the app function component. As the app function component is fired, the useState hook line will read the updated user query value from the React engine and destructure high. Therefore, the JSX now displays high as well. The overall result is that we get a console.log of h first, and then a display of high thanks to the re-render. Since this is all happening under the hood in a matter of milliseconds, it can be confusing what is executing first, but this is hopefully revealing of how the React engine handles hooks internally and how it recalls React component functions overall for re-rendering. Okay, with that, let's go back to the code because we want to remove that extra user query div that we used for displayment, or rather display and demonstration purposes. So go ahead and take that out. Cool. And next, let's return to running code with React hooks. We're going to build a new component that doesn't use one new state hook, but multiple of them in a row. All right, let's move on.